We are sitting here on a bridge um, that didn't exist way back when, when we first started coming here on a parcel of land that used to be owned by the government, uh, local government. Now uh, we, uh, now our NGO partner has purchased this land. And so, uh, so the, the actions of our students over the years have helped uh, are a key aspect of how um, our NGO partner was able to purchase this land. And now Woodlands Conservancy um, owns this as, a, as a, a permanently protected piece of land. Things change a lot when we're here. When I first met this young thing, she was actually not even in college. And she's very young. And then she came to, left the great state of Louisiana, came to the great state of California and became an ESRM major, uh, graduated with a degree, um, came with us on, on a, a gazillion million service learning experiences. Uh, now is just back in Louisiana, almost done with her PhD. So it's almost Dr. Vanessa Van Heerden we can introduce. So Vanessa, so, so tell me the value of someone that's been a student and now you know, not been a student. Um, how important or how valuable has it been to have experience like the service learning experiences, these types of things? Yeah, um, so when I was an ESRM major, I participated in this New Orleans service learning trip. I also was one of the students that went to our service learning trip to the Cook Islands over the summer. Um, and I think what it did was allow me to build my education outside of the classroom. So there's one thing about sitting in a class and having a faculty lecture to you and learning through that environment, but being able to go outside, get your hands dirty and be innately involved in the research and learning is so much stronger of a push for increasing our scientific intellect, really. Um, and so I have taken, I, from the service learning trip to the Cook Islands, I created my capstone project um, and that capstone project completely shifted my entire career. Um, I decided to be a marine scientist. I fell in love with using ArcGIS technology and spatial mapping. I fell in love with science communication and that is what that skill set that I was able to acquire from my service learning experiences is what allowed me to become a successful geospatial ecologist and almost doctor. Um, so I would say that it allowed me to also build my own confidence in who I was as a scientist by putting me in an environment where I had to be comfortable saying I don't know how to do this, let me learn how to do it and be able to ask the questions with being in a close environment to where I had the availability of a faculty member who had that ex uh, expertise that could show me how to do that. Rather than just asking a question in a lab about a picture that's on a slide, I was able to say, hey, there's a plant, there's this wetland, what is, what is the importance of that? And he could tell me or they could tell me. And that ability to take knowledge in, in the real time of seeing it and then while looking at it, learning about it, and then applying it and creating something out of it. Because each one of the service learning experiences that we had, we did something with it. We made a poster, we had um, a poster session, we would teach it, we would talk to others about it, we would make videos about it, we would do stuff like this. Um, and it allowed me to also build, so I built the research side of it, I built the learning side of it, but then I also built the communication side of it. And I think that ability to take what we learn and communicate it makes us effective scientists. So that's what I'll say. That's cool. I love it. I love it. So, so um, uh, let's see, how do I say this? So some people on campus recently, so after the pandemic, a lot of people are reassessing things like, should we keep doing this? Should we change this? And I've heard um, some uh, folks on campus say, really, what's the value of a, of a trip like this to you know, to Costa Rica, to Louisiana, because you can only take 12 or 15 or 20 students, you know, you can only take a few students. We probably, we, we shouldn't spend the money on that. That's not a good efficient use. We should spend the money instead on, on some other important thing on campus to be sure, but that we're, uh, it'll benefit like, like many, many students. So, so some people are doing this calculation saying, well, this isn't worth uh, mm -hmm. expenditures or this isn't worth our time or our limited resources. How might you, how might you respond to that, that argument or that, that comment? I think that if the goal of a university is to educate and further the education of young individuals to build the next generation of academics, scientists, researchers, professionals, they need experiences like this. This put my service learning opportunities in my undergraduate program put me above the rest whenever I was applying to my graduate program, if I applied to other jobs. I could tell them what I could do 
that was more specialized and beneficial and tailored to what they needed because I had an opportunity to learn really in a field, real-time environment that wasn't just in a classroom. I mean, we can only teach so much when you're standing in front of a room of individuals um, with a PowerPoint slide. There's, and you can show videos, you can try and all these, do these, all these other ways of communicating when you're in a classroom, but it's so much different to teach by action than it is to teach by sitting. Um, and that's something that I have taken with me now as a graduate student and I will take with me as a doctor in whatever career um, I take forward is the importance of actually going outside and putting your hands in the science because it's only when our hands get dirty and we can feel it that we actually understand it. I love it. Don't teach by sitting. We don't teach by sitting. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs>